far as we know how the world works, it is entirely physical or material. Okay. Therefore, if we believe that there's something in addition to the physical or the material, some kind of touchy, feely, airy, fairy kind of stuff like Searle uh, talks about, then uh, it must be unscientific. There can't be anything like that. So it's an illusion, the idea that there's some consciousness in existence to physical reality, and it's an illusion generated by, and then follows your favorite theory. Nowadays, the favorite theory is by computer programs right. in our brain, right. but that's all there is really. Right. Now, how about yeah. that? Was that honest enough? That's <laughs> yeah, what my enemy. That's what my adversaries think. That was honest. That was honest. What my adversaries think. For much of the century, and science has just been afraid of subjectivity yeah. because science is meant to be objective, right? It's meant to be no subjective elements here. But consciousness, by its very nature, is subjective. So some people think it follows from this by definition. Science can't mm. touch consciousness. It's always interesting yeah, to me how the latest brain theory it just relates to the latest technology. It was a telephone exchange at the beginning That's of right, the century. Yeah, right. Then it moved into simple computers, then holograms. Remember the hologram yeah. theory of the oh, brain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and then, right? And then, uh, and then uh, uh, parallel computers and uh, now quantum physics. So isn't it like just the latest theory and complexity yeah. theory? It goes back right. all the way to the Greeks. The Greeks thought, right. uh, the Greek thinkers thought that the uh, that the brain was a kind of catapult. But look, there's something, very, there's something very important here that we've, le we've left out. Even the notion of a subject is questionable. Take Buddhist concepts of consciousness. Mm. There is no subject. I think we don't even know the questions to ask at this point in time. I think we're just at the beginnings of formulating some questions, let alone coming up with any answers mm. about the nature of this great mystery. John, do you think the uh, interrelationship of the of religion and the wisdom traditions have a significant uh, uh, story to tell consciousness? I'm open-minded, you know. My I've theory never is, heard you accuse yeah, of that. Yeah. <laughs> My theory is use any weapon you can lay your hand on, use any data that you can find. If you can get interesting data from mystics or swamis or uh, people under drugs, that's fine by me. Just get all, all the weaponry you, uh, you can. But I think when we solve this problem, we're going to have to solve it by examining actual biological mechanisms. You're going to have to get into the thalamocortical system and find out how these mechanisms work. But once you do, and yeah. we're 100 years in the future, when we have a complete biological mechanism of consciousness, you are then satisfied that con you will then be satisfied that consciousness is biologically explained. Absolutely. Well, Marilyn, yeah. you won't be. Oh, I would say we need an integral uh, research agenda where we acknowledge the physical dimensions that John's referring to and that Jim's referring to. But we also need to recognize that you can't have it in isolation from other people, so there's going to be that social, cultural context. And I also think there's very compelling data to suggest that there is a, a transpersonal dimension. <laughs> you know, all these mystics and sages had something uh, in terms of insight, and that ultimately we're going to have to accommodate these various perspectives. You see, in I think there's a lot science. of commonality here, but this is a fundamental disagreement. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's any out-of-brain consciousness. And you do, Fred. Oh, well, I'm convinced that there is, mainly through traditions and uh, mainly through what I've read and also through some extraordinary experiences that I personally have had involved with shamans in various parts of the world. Jim, you don't think so? I'll keep an open mind on it, but right now I don't see why we need it. Dave? John said that consciousness is caused by the brain. Consciousness arises from the brain. But I think, nevertheless, cause and effect. We know cause and effect are usually different things. So consciousness arises from the brain. I think consciousness is not reducible to the brain. We've got to keep these two separate domains interwoven, but uh, nevertheless distinct in their fundamental natures. Time for a summary question. Predictions. Fast forward 100 years. What has happened to consciousness? John. Well, I think in, in 100 years, and I hope uh, before 100 years, we are going to know how the brain does it. As we, as we talk here, there are very competent people working on precisely this question. By what processes exactly do human and animal brains cause consciousness? And I think we're going to know the answer to that. Marilyn. We figured out the limits of a, mater a strictly materialist model. And we've begun to embrace some of the uh, expanded aspects of our being in such a way that we can really grapple with some of the serious social problems that we're facing today. Jim. Like John, I think we'll understand the brain in terms of neurons, and we'll understand how this uh, phenomenon of consciousness arises from those neurons. Fred, I hope you don't agree with these guys. No, I don't entirely disagree with that. What we are going to understand in 100 years is possibly how consciousness creates brains and how brains arise from the, from the absolute nothingness. Dave. I think we'll be closer to articulating a set of fundamental principles, <clears throat> fundamental laws connecting physical processes and processes of conscious experience. When we have a simple set of fundamental principles, like the laws of physics here, 
then we'll have a theory of consciousness. In the current scientific view, consciousness, our sense of self, emerges from all the complex electrical and chemical activities in our brains, like an atomic bomb emerges or explodes from a critical mass of uranium. But could consciousness be something more, never reducible to physical states of the brain, a fundamental attribute of human beings, an independent element of reality? Philosophers and physicists are disagreeing among themselves. For now, this divergence of opinion is what brings us closer to truth. I'm Robert Kuhn.